This is Joseph Coco. I'm at 8, 2014 on behalf of Becky Holborn's Art Process Blog, Keep on Trucking Natto Soup. If you could introduce yourself, Ruth. Hey, my name is Ruth Halloran. I am a comic artist by night and an art director by day. So, that's who I am. Okay, and what's bringing you to Ape this year? Selling things, obviously. Awesome. But we are actually longtime Ape goers. This is one of our favorite conventions, so that's what we're all about. Thank you for being here. All right, and so. Uh, I, I know you've been coming for a little while. Have you changed uh, the type of things you've brought to Ape over time, or it's always been primarily comics and a little bit of prints to draw people's attention? Yeah, the first year we came, it was definitely more print-based, and it's moved on to books. And that's simply just due to the fact that like, I've had more time as the years go by, so I've been able to make those years. Yeah, longer form things. And you find the audience responds well to books? I mean, it is a, so, yeah. a, a comic convention after all, so yes. I would hope so. Yes, you would think. <laughs> Okay, and can you tell me a little bit about um, how I saw you got started? I said, can you tell me a little bit about how I saw you got started? Oh, this one. Yes. Um, well, it mostly started because I saw so many cute girls at conventions and I just drew their outfits because they're adorable. And then that moved on to drawing them as they were on the streets and in the train stations, which involved sneakily taking a lot of photos to do that. Awesome. And you were working from photo reference or you were just sketching them out quickly as they I were need around? I photo reference. I cannot sketch that quickly. Yeah. Especially trying to get down some of those colors. Exactly. And unless you've got a good memory for palettes, I can understand that. I don't have a good memory for anything. So. <laughs> okay. And, um... What's, uh, what particularly drew you to Ape? You said you've been coming here for many years now. Um, are there other conventions that uh, you're you're trying to attend? We do attend a lot of anime conventions. We did yeah. anime earlier this year, and um, also we do a Ape Fest every single year. Okay. I, um, I prefer Ape, though, simply because it feels like it has the, the crowd of a larger convention, but it's more indie-based, more about the comics, less, like, I guess, less marketing, so I really like yeah. that fewer people are probably coming here for the big name artists and a lot of people are coming just to meet new artists basically. Exactly. And I feel like there's just so much talent that gets lost in a larger convention that this, you get the size but you get the low key aspect of the convention that's working. Okay. And um, you obviously have a, a shoujo influenced style. Um, <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about uh, how how well that's accepted on the, the West Coast? Are you finding uh, your 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 fans are um, finding you at uh, in in this region at the conventions you're attending? Uh, yeah, I feel I haven't actually gotten any negative response to my style, and I'm like, I'm happy about that. So I can't say that there's any prejudice against it. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, you said you worked as an art director as well. Is that what kind of drew you into comics, or were you doing comics before that? It was comics before. My art director job is actually for advertising, so it's a completely different field, completely different mindset, and yeah. it's great to do both things. Has that influenced your um, your style uh, very much? It has not influenced my drawing style. It's simply influenced my understanding of how marketing works and how better to merchandise for an event like this. Great. So you know, like the the branding techniques that will draw people to your table, essentially. <laughs> yes. Okay, and can, um, can you tell me a bit about uh, how you got started in comics? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've always loved comics since I was a kid. I went to school for fine arts, and um, I enjoyed it, but it's not what I want to do, and I knew that immediately. So it was around 2009 where um, we came, I came together with a group of my friends and founded Camerlinks, which was at that time a zine that was that put out online monthly. It was a compilation of writing and comics, and that's I started to really like make it a point to do comics every single month, and I loved it. I remember why I loved it. I got back into it. Okay, sounds good. Um, a lot of people, or a few people, have talked to me about uh, comics collectives and 24 Hours uh, Comics Day in the San Francisco area. Is that something that you think a lot of people uh, get involved in in this area? Are you are you involved in those things? A lot of people get involved with it. Um, Beef at Mission Comics is a great job organizing these events. I personally got involved with something like 24 Hour Comics Day because I'm an old person and I need to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand. I think a lot of us have, have gotten that way. Uh, you kind of worked that out of your system in college if uh, if you went, and those long nights are over now. Yeah, you do not want to repeat that again. 
Okay. Um, and so, can would you have any advice to someone who's considering attending Ape for the first time? If you have an opportunity, I would say come to the convention first before you table. See what other people are selling. See what seems to be doing well. Um, talk to talk to the table goers. Don't be shy. We. I mean, like I know that as artists, we're there's kind of a stigma against discussing money. It's kind of the same with culture, but don't feel that way. Talk to someone about it. See what actually moves and yeah. Dance. Certainly, just to set your expectations. Okay. And if you can't take that opportunity, like if you can't go to a convention and scout it out beforehand, just um, I'd say this goes for any convention. Maybe prepare a range of items that go for like very cheap, so moderately expensive, and just give your, give your audience an option. So they don't just put all your eggs in one basket. Okay. And how would you compare the audience of a, the Zine Fest? The, I assume you're talking about the San Francisco Zine Fest? Yes. Uh, in comparison to Ape? Zine Fest is much smaller, much smaller venue. Um, you have yeah. to price it. Are, are people looking for the same things at the conventions, do you think? Actually, yes. Between Zine Fest and Ape, um, I feel like they're the same sort of people buying the same sort of thing, but Ape is smaller, the budget is smaller, and it's, Zine Fest is smaller. Yeah, so, and I assume the table costs are less as well? Yes, yeah. So. <laughs> okay, and where could we find your work online? You can find my work at ohalloran.com, O-H-Halloran, and um, here's my business card. If you okay. want to, okay. Yeah, that. put it on the screen. Yes. And also, you can go to paperlinks.org, which is a weekly blog, like it's updated every single day by a group of five lady artists who are all awesome, and I can say that they're awesome because they're all my best buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what sort of uh, post do you make towards? Um, I personally do anything from, uh, let's see, personal posts, or I try to do a little bit informative. Actually, if you are interested in tabling at a convention, I have a series that I'm doing on paperlinks. It's called My House Convention. Series and it goes over the how to's of how to booth, how to attend conventions, what you should prepare for. It's ongoing, so we can always be updated. Okay, and that's like a generic sort of primer, or that's per on a convention basis? It's not, I'm gonna tell it's not for like specific conventions, so it's generic. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, I hope you have a good April. Thank, Thank you very you. much for interviewing. Thank you, Jess. Nice.